Hi there, in this video I'm going to use an FC block, floating point and converter instructions to show you how analog signals can be received by analog input modules. And then I'll test my analog output module by generating three different voltages. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Let's start the video. If you remember, I connected the outputs of this signal generator, which are a voltage signal between 0 and 10 volts, and a current signal between 0 and 20 milliampers, to these two addresses of my analog input module. In this video, I want to buy a program to read these two signals. Like the previous videos, I can start the programming step from the main organization block, OB1. Notice I'll need to use my codes twice to read the two signals. So a better way is to create a function or ST block with this name, read analog signals. Inside the FC1 block, I'll use this mathematical function to read an analog input signal and convert it to its related process value. Note that I can call FC blocks as many times as I need by the main organization block OB1. Okay, usually each function has some inputs, outputs, and maybe some internal variables. I need three inputs. Naturally, the first one is the received analog input signal. Remember, according to the previous video, it's an integer number between 0 and 27,648 when the received signal is manipular within its rated range. Also, I need to determine the height and load scales of the input signal. According to the hardware settings in the previous video, if I want to read the voltage generated by my signal generator, these two inputs will be 10 and 0. Note that I've selected the real format for these two inputs. Because I'll write my program codes in real format, because of this division in the mathematical function. The real format uses 32 bits to store real numbers. You can use the hair window to see more details about this format. Well, my function has one output, the process value, which can be the received electrical signal or an industrial parameter such as level, temperature, flow, and so on. Okay, I also need some internal variables to implement the mathematical function. First, let's define two variables. I'll use them to change the format of the received analog input from an integer number to its real format. As I mentioned earlier, when I receive a unipolar signal within its rated range, my analog input module gives me 
an integer number between 0 and 27,648. First, I want to change it to a real number. So, let's select the converter in instructions. Note that there isn't any instruction to convert an integer number to a real number directly. First, I have to change the format of integer numbers to double integer format. After that, I can use this instruction to convert them to real numbers. Now, let's use floating point instructions to implement the mathematical function. First, let's use a subtraction instruction to calculate this part of my mathematical function. Well, I need another internal variable to store the result of the subtraction. Note that the output of this instruction is a number in real format. Now let's define more internal variables and then use the floating point instructions to implement the mathematical function. Okay, based on this user manual, which was explained in the previous video, if my analog module receives a unipolar signal within its rated range, the signal will be converted to an integer number between 0 and 27,648. So I need to enter this number here. Note that the inputs of this instruction should be real numbers. So I need to add the fractional part of 27,648,2, which equals to 0. Well, let me compile the program based on the mathematical function. Finally, I need to restore the result of the mathematical function as the output of the FC block. Let me save the program and exit from the FC block. Now, let's open the main organization block 
OB1 to call the FC1 alert. Okay, as you see on the left side under the FC block folder, I can find my FC block. Let's add it to the first network and determine its inputs and output. Remember that in the previous video, I connected the voltage output of my signal generator to the first channel of the analog input module with this address, which its range is 0 to 10 volts. And finally, I need a double volt memory to restore the result of my function because it's a real number. Similarly, let's use the FC1 plug to read the current signal, which was connected to channel 2 of the analog input module. Remember that, according to the hardware settings in the previous video, its rated range is 4 to 20 milliampers. Now let's set the program and transfer the project to my PLC. Alright, I've downloaded the project successfully. Now let's open the OB1 pillar. Note that my signal generator has a mini switch to select its voltage output or its current signal. First, let's select the voltage output. As you can see, the first FC1 block calculates the voltage signal correctly. Okay, now let's select the current signal. As you can see, the second FC1 plug calculates the current signal correctly. Okay, see this slide which was explained in the previous video. For this example, if I want to calculate the level of substance and instead of reading the voltage signal, only I need to change these two inputs in my program to 0 and 50 meters. Well, as you can see, if I change the voltage signal, the output of the first FC block will change between 0 and 50 meters.
All right, until now, I've explained how to read analog input signals. Now, let's see how I can use my analog output module. It generates an electrical signal based on the number which receives from the CPU. Usually, it should be a number between 0 and 27,648 for unipolar signals. First, let's check the hardware settings of my analog output module. Okay, this is my analog output module. First, let's change its default addresses. Note that my analog output module can generate both voltage and current signals. I only connected its first channel to this analog voltmeter. So let's select the voltage item and then an appropriate range, 0 to 10 volts. Now let's save the hardware settings. Now, let me test my analog output module with a simple program. Remember, I selected 0 to 10 volts as the rated range for the first channel of my analog output module. So, I need to use the move instruction to send 0 and 27,648 numbers to the first channel of my analog output module with this address to generate voltage 0 and 10 volts. Also, I can generate 5 volts at the first output of my analog output module by sending this number. Note that this table from the Siemens user manual shows more examples. Now, let's set the program and transfer the project to my PLC. As you can see, my PLC station can generate three different voltages at the first output of my analog output module. Alright, I hope you learned how to use analog signals in industries. Thanks for watching this video. Take care. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.